Today we want to talk about an issue that was especially difficult for beginners that are trying to get into the hobby. Because there's several standards, there's now a free sky, Tyrannus, there's multi-protocol transmitters, there's several different protocols, one is called ACCST, one is Access. FreeSky has been updating their firmware and protocol in the last years uh, in a way that people weren't able to keep up at some times. The improvement was not really there in my opinion, so the standard is still ACCST, especially with the access protocol. Some hardware modifications have been done to the transmitters, so older transmitters are not compatible to newer firmwares. But I've also created a spreadsheet for you to start from the basics for every beginner or even intermediate pilot that is trying to set up their gear with FreeSky hardware. And I've been focusing on simple questions. If you're aware of having even a FreeSky hardware, FreeSky receiver, FreeSky hardware is only able to bind to FreeSky hardware or multi-protocol transmitters. And there comes the next problem that people are using multiple multi-protocol transmitters that are pretty easy to use and straightforward because you can select different versions of firmware. For example, we have different standards. There's the FCC standard for the US region and the LBT standard for the Europe region. FCC is uh, widely used worldwide. Well, LBT is really only for, for Europe, the listen before talk. Uh, standard and if you are from Europe buying FCC gear you have a problem because your transmitter that is probably on a LPT firmware won't bind to FCC if it's a FreeSky Tenerinus if you have a multi-protocol transmitter you will be able to select what firmware you want to choose if you are on, on original FreeSky hardware that's older you might be forced to flash reflash your transmitter or your receiver uh, all iFlight models are actually shipped with the latest uh, FreeSky firmware, so you have the newest version already installed. It's also more difficult to flash a receiver than a transmitter, so you might be forced to flash your transmitter only, which can be done with the SD card easily. That's already the first distinct uh, difference between multi-protocol receivers, where you can select different firmware versions, and a Tyrannus where you have to flash and update your transmitter to be able to use and match your uh, receiver. And I try to walk you through here step by step explaining that there's different protocols, ACCST and Access, different standards that are not compatible with each other, the 8 and the 16 protocols and receivers where the biggest difference is uh, the numbers of channels and the failsafe can be set either D16 on a transmitter, D8 on a receiver. Uh, there's a latency difference of how many channels you choose. There's a difference in multi-protocol transmitters that can select versions X and X2, which stands for a firmer version on the transmitter uh, matching with the receiver. So if your receiver has an old firmware version, you have to use the old firmware version on the multi-protocol transmitter as well, which would be X. If you have a transmitter that's a FreeSky Tyrannis, where I just explained before, that needs a reflash if you want to update or downgrade your firmware to match your receiver, you have no other chance to use your SD card and download the newest firmware from the FreeSky website. And so on. I will now show you step by step on the radio uh, how to do those steps and how to prepare your radio for the bind and then how to bind it. I do that on three different models. And please download that PDF file if you want to walk through step by step and uh, get some more explanations on, on some details and things you have to be careful. iFlight also has done a great job in making it easy for you to start with a new BNF from our iFlight store and that was applying stickers to um, get some attention on several things you have to be careful about. For example, not plugging in your battery. If there is no antenna attached, taking care of your CG before lifting off because a wrong CG, uh, indistributed weight balance, might cause weird flight behavior. 
and um, mine is a prototype build so I don't have the sticker here in the back but there's usually a sticker here showing you again what receiver option you've been choosing if it's not a PNP model but if there is a receiver installed you definitely get a sticker telling you where the bind button is so our first step today would be locating your bind button I will show you uh, my receiver which is not installed in a BNF I will show you what the receiver is doing at the end of this video, binding my transmitter. But your first step at home should be locating your receiver, locating your bind buttons and checking the LEDs that's on the receiver to find out what state it's in. To prepare your free sky radio for a new receiver or a new model, in that case we want to create a new model, we hit the menu button and select the place where you want to put it let's select 35 hold the enter button create model and then we are on page one now we switch to page two with the page button and then we select the name in that case it's my rxsr receiver and then we'll scroll down either to the bottom or go all the way up and come down on the bottom and prepare my radio for the bind. Do I want a D8 protocol or D16 protocol? What receiver are you using? For all our iFlight BNFs, usually we use D16 receivers like the FreeSky XM Plus or RXSR. So we select the D16 protocol. Uh, one benefit is you can set the fail safe with the transmitter. So we go down and set PSF mode to no pauses. We also set the channels only to eight channels so we can lower our uh, delay, our latency from our radio. And uh, then we would prepare our radio on the page number four. And as you see, we only have the gimbals selected as inputs currently that's uh, the firmware default for FreeSky OpenDX but we need another auxiliary switch so what we want to do is we select one where we would like to arm our drone maybe a second one for angle mode and in that case I would go to number five hit the enter button scroll down to source hit the enter button again and use the back switch here as my arm switch in the future so it's selected SE automatically go exit use input number six enter again scroll down to source I want to use that one for my angle mode that's called SA you also have the names for each switch or knob here on the radio hit exit again so I have my gimbal inputs plus two sticks defined. If you want to use more, just set up two more stick inputs and then switch to the next page to the mixer and hit enter for number five, enter for number six. So our, as you can see over here, our stick is mixing it on the radio and outputting to the, uh, to the receiver for better flight. We can now come back to our bind menu on page number two and hit the bind button. If you have a receiver uh, which is telemetry enabled like a RXSR receiver on uh, an additional S port wire or F port wire you want to use the telemetry on option. Usually iFlight BNFs don't come with the telemetry option enabled, especially XM Plus receivers don't offer that option. So we want to select telemetry off, only if it's customized telemetry on, and hit the enter button. And a weird beep sequence got initialized, which means the transmitter is waiting for a receiver to bind. To set up our jumper T-Light radio, we would have to use other buttons, as those are not FreeSky standard defined. So we have to hold the MDL button for the menu scroll down to a place where we want to create a new model hit the enter button and say create model 
the page button is over here i think oh, no it's yeah it's that button so the menu button on the free sky uh, radio and uh, page button here on the jumper is the same and we scroll down and give it the same name i now have to go down again similar to the original free sky radio to come to my internal rf options now on the multi protocol transmitter i have one option more and that's the mode multi also types are more available for different uh, receivers there's as well different uh, free sky options i want to stick to x or x2 x stands for x1 that means firmware versions 1.x uh, upwards lower than 2.0 and X2 would be 2.0 and upwards. So be sure what receiver firmware version you have flashed. All iFlight BNFs come with the latest receivers and latest firmware. That means we have to select X2, go down to the subtype where we have several options as well. If you are again, as I mentioned before on the original FreeSky video in the uh, FCC region you can select the FCC D16 or D16 A channel or European region with LBT uh, listen before talk 16 channel option or 8 channel option again the 8 channel option also always offers lower latency that's why I would prefer to use the 8 channel and scroll down to my filter mode and set it to no pauses I also want to go ahead before I go into the bind to set up my auxiliary switches to be able to arm that's why I need to scroll all the way up press the page button to get to page number 5 scroll down to my inputs select my input source I use the back button here as my arming switch same as on the original FreeSky radio and here that's my angle mode switch return also go to page 6 to select your mixer and hit enter return enter return to get your inputs into your mixer and output to your receiver and better flight we now can return to page number two and bind our receiver if you have one of the Radiomaster radios, like the TX16S here, which I do not recommend to use because it's basically just a jumper clone. One of the jumper shareholders or partners left the company, created their own Radiomaster brand, copied the designs, and now with less engineering, less quality, producing even cheaper radios. But anyway, um, if you want to bind that radio, hold the MDL button, the menu button, scroll down all the way again in this case uh, model has already been created you go to internal RF select multi you either select free sky or free sky x2 it's the same as on the jumper T light if you have a receiver that has been flashed with a firmware below 2.0 for example a 1.8 or 1.9 older firmware Please select the FreeSky option only uh, on the T-Lite, it's called FreeSky X, here it's called only FreeSky. Um, if you have a receiver flashed with a firmware version 2.0 and above, so 2.X, select the X2 option. All BNFs bought from iFlight come flashed with the latest receiver firmware, so we have to select X2 to be able to find the receiver. You can switch over to D16 and either select the D16 option, the D16 8 channel option with as on the jumper T light gives you a last delay. We have the LBT option uh, if you are in the European Union, the listen before talk regional standard or the LPT 8 channel mode with low latency as well in my case I want to stick to the 16 18 channels because I'm in the FCC region select this one go down to fail safe mode and set it to no pauses go back up to bind 
As mentioned before in a Free Sky Tyrannis and Jumper T Light video, don't forget to set up your inputs and mixers accordingly to get your sticks and auxiliary switches to better flight. To show you how to bind the receiver, in my case I have one RHSR here already connected to a flight controller. I set up my radio as we discussed before. I use a battery, hold the button the bind button on the receiver. If you see no green light, that means you didn't hold down the button properly while plugging in. In my case, you can only see a red light. That means we have to start the process again. Okay, now we are ready. Our receiver has the green and red light on. That means it's ready to bind. We now take our radio, go to bind, and what you can see is the receiver starts to flash. The red LED starts to flash, that means it has been bound to our radio. I can now hit the bind button again to make it stop. Power cycle my receiver. And as you can see, my receiver green LED